Hey guys, welcome back. In my last video, I took a look at a Pentium 4 521. That was a Prescott CPU at 2.8 GHz with 1 MB L2 cache and 800 MHz front side bus. That CPU was hot, the motherboard power delivery had issues running a 3.6 GHz overclock and it required a hefty V-Core of 1.48 volts. Typical for Prescott P4s. I wasn't even going to take a look at the 641 until someone left a comment in that video reminding me that it was actually a cedar mill core and predicted a much higher overclock with far less power. I had all but forgotten about cedar mill Pentium 4s and as far as I know they were the last Pentium 4s ever made. These CPUs launched in the first quarter of 2006 on socket 775 and just a few short months later Conroe was launched on the same socket, which made Pentium 4s practically irrelevant at that point. Cedar Mill is still a single core CPU with hyper threading, 2 megabytes L2 cache, 800 megahertz front side bus, and the 641C1 revision that launched had a TDP of 86 watts at 3.2 gigahertz, while a later D0 revision had the TDP lowered to 65 watts. I will be using the same system that the ASUS P5N73 AM motherboard, 4GB of DDR2-800, a GTX 260 GPU, a Cooler Master Hyper-T2 cooler, Windows 7 Service Pack 1 64-bit on a Samsung SSD. I was fortunate to have the D0 revision and I was able to get an overclock of 4.3GHz at 1.38V V-Core. This CPU would have gone further, but I am limited in the BIOS by the stupid voltage control on this motherboard. So of course we need to get our numbers for Cinebench R15. Even though I have my doubts about the score we got with the 521 since the VRM throttling was becoming a real issue. So I'm going to have to rerun that chip again in the future. Or just not even worry about it. Yeah, probably that. Okay, so the results are in and it's not really all that bad. I'm also going to start charting these in a graph just to make it easier to compare. And this is where we fall in our single core score. Alright, I'm going to start off with some games from around 2012-2013 that I don't expect to really run well. But then we're going to test some from around the time of the CPU's launch. I'm not going to give any commentary till the end, then we can just go over the conclusion. I have Afterburner showing the average and 1% lows as well, so check out some game capture from a Pentium 4 at 4.3 GHz.
again. Fall back to Marine HQ and await further orders. Report directly to Marine headquarters and await further orders.
But can it run Crisis? Well, that depends on what you mean by run. The game runs, but it isn't exactly playable. The early sections of this game are pretty easy on hardware compared to when you get closer to the end, and it really still can't pull it off. Remember, this CPU launched in 2006, and Crisis launched just one year later. So, what are my thoughts on the Cedar Mill Pentium 4s? Well, I think they're definitely too little too late. It's great for a Pentium 4, runs very cool, uses far less voltage, overclocks like crazy, and if I recall correctly, it was a Cedar Mill that held the overclock record for clock frequency at over 8 GHz for several years until beaten by a Celeron. And that was an era when the record was being broke almost every month. But that doesn't mean that it's a good CPU. When you consider it's still the same old netburst architecture, it's just been perfected to run at very high frequencies. At this point in time, AMD was eating Intel alive, and this is a time when Intel got a reputation for being, uh, I don't know, shady. Whether that's true or not, I don't really know, but these Pentium 4s were put into an awful lot of OEM machines despite the fact that the Athlons ran circles around them at a lower frequency, temperature, and current draw. Intel was not really the dominating chip during this era until Conroe launched, and that's when AMD had a very hard time keeping up. But that's all just my opinion. If you made it this far in the video, let me know below what you think of the Cedar Mill P4s or just Pentium 4s in general. And I hope you guys found this interesting. And as usual, we will see you on the next one.